thank you very much. So firstly, Royd, thank you very much for inviting me. Been dead excited to come along. And as Royd said, we had to move it back several times. So we went through um, Ignite, which is an accelerator program. Um, so I'll talk, I'll talk a bit about accelerator programs um, after this. So um, as Royd said, I think this is the fourth business in about seven years. I've got a co-founder, Dan, who I've worked with on and off for about 10 years. Um, we set up a software agency and did the classic case of get a client come to us who wanted, it was online, it sounds very boring, online stock control and order management. So we ended up seeing that opportunity and we built our product. So that was our first kind of, uh, our introduction into running a SaaS company. And we did that for four years. And while we were there, we were constantly coming across the problem of, of managing feedback properly. Because in a SaaS company, you've got um, your customers telling you what they think the product should do. And then you've got sales team who want this feature, that feature, the other feature, because it'll help them close a sale. And then you've got account management team who are really interested in like retaining your current client base and growing the, the revenue there. And all these people are kind of fighting for features in your product the whole time. Um, and then on management team, you sat there going, oh, how do I manage all these different stakeholders, all these different people, and, and how do what people are asking for, how do those things align with where I want to take the company? And it is very difficult. And we did the whole thing on spreadsheets, and you get a lot of stale data, you don't understand where feature requests are coming from. Um, so we built Receptive, um, which was spun out as its own company um, at the end of last year. Um, so I'll give you a quick demo. Um, so if you were um, a software as a service provider and you log in, you've got your dashboard with all your, your features coming in. And it's very easy to, to suggest a feature. So you, your end users get exposure to this as well. Um, and we've just got, it's just a fuzzy search at the minute. We're going to do some clever stuff there. Um, but you can very quickly see if anything matches to, to dedupe stuff. Um, and you've got your releases. So these are all things that you've been building into your um, product. And you've got roadmap as well, so people have got a bit of visibility of, of, of what's ongoing. Um, we try to keep this really simple, just gone with developing and plans because we didn't want to, you know, it's like when you start putting dates on stuff, everyone expects them to do, be delivered on time. Um, so it was about trying to bring all the feature requests together. And we've got like a little JavaScript snippet that you drop into your app and it pulls all the data over and customers can just self serve. Um, so where we started getting really clever with it was with the reporting. Um, cause one problem we came up against a lot in the last company was that you'd hear the same feature request over and over again so you'd think that was what you had to build when really they might not be adding the most value to your product. So if you have a look at the um, popular report you can see here ability to upload an image is, is the top thing so you think great I hear that all day long I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build ability to upload an image. Um, and then we realised when you start asking your customers or your stakeholders in your business to prioritise feature requests, you suddenly get a completely different view of the data. So you move from having a spreadsheet with kind of votes on for features into a dynamic system. So if we have a look at um, the smart list report, this folds in um, like the account value, the number of kind of votes you've got on features and customer priorities as well. So you can see the, um, this, is, this is our receptive one, we use receptive on receptive which is it's great, it's great using your own product all day long, it's brilliant. Um, so you've got ability to upload image, so really that, it, it doesn't, that feature doesn't add any value to us whatsoever. And if we look at the top, um, we've got this feature, and the reason this is at the top is because these two people pay us the most money. So our metric in our, in our business can be based on, on how much revenue we're taking from the different users. Um, the, the, the first reason we built Receptive really was because of all the feature requests we were getting in from like hundreds of users. Um, we had no idea who they were, whether they were high value customers, whether they were people who'd used our product for a bit and left, whether it were people who were using the product for free. Um, so we started kind of segmenting where all, that, all the feature requests were coming from. So we got um, the value add from people who pay us the most money, um, what free users want, current free users want and churn paying as well so you can start to get some insights into why people are churning and, and are not using your product anymore. Um, so from there we started building out effort versus value. That doesn't tell you much does it? Um, so we know the value that features add again based on how much people pay you, what they're voting for, what the priorities are and then we've started uh, dialing in like development effort so you can see over here, like integration with Intercom, it's quite high value feature. It's quite 
quite a lot of effort, but that's probably something we should build. And then up here we can see you know, like Salesforce integration. Again, that's a lot of value, but it's also a lot of effort. So we might choose to put our like, two top developers on, on those features up there, and we'd probably ignore these down here. Um, so we started moving the reporting into giving you insights into where you should be placing your development resource to make sure you're constantly putting out features that actually add value to your product versus those that people think you should build. Um, if we have a look at MetaSuggest, you'll see this is the prioritization. So when people log into your app and go into the feature request section, they can quickly kind of prioritize the features that map to them. So if I said to you, you can go on holiday to like three places, Spain, America, or Australia, and you can go to all three if you want, you'd pick all three. But when you have to prioritize and think about things, you get a really different picture. Um, so we found, we found very quickly with the last company um, that we'd go from this really static list of, of feature requests to one that was changing all the time. Because you'll find people change priorities a lot as well based on where they are in the life cycle with the use of your product as well. <coughs> um, so yeah, that's a that's a, a kind of a quick look around what we've been what we've been building out. Um, I'm just going to move over to oh, let's go the right way. I've lost my mouse. Sorry. Hooray. So where we got to with the product today is, is mainly through going through um, an accelerator program. Is anyone, has anyone been on an accelerator program before or thought of going on one? Anybody? Have you been on one? Thought of. Thought of one. Is there any in particular you looked at or? Um, Ignite. The Ignite program. Right, cool. Um, so what it really did for us um, compared to other businesses we've run is it, it made us, it, it really got us somewhere very, very quickly. It's the whole, you know, that lean mentality of, of test. We, we went in with like a, an MVP and we just tested the crap out of it and we got exposure to this massive network of people who all had an opinion on what we were doing, what was rubbish, what could be done better. So we kind of came out the end of a programme with a much bigger idea of where we were going with the product and the business. Um, so it's, I mean, it's absolutely amazing. If you, even if you've got an idea, they were taking te they take teams on that they don't have any product. They don't even have an MVP built. They just have this idea or a problem set they want to kind of address. So it's an amazing opportunity to explore something. And also the mentoring is incredible. Like we were seeing like 20 people a day. It was like some horrible form of speed dating where you had like 10 minutes and you got flung around this room of people bashing in all these different directions, saying, that's rubbish, why haven't you done this, or that's really good. And you gradually pick up little signals from all that feedback you're getting into, as to which direction is the one you should be, should be going in. So it was fantastic. And also just being surrounded by other people doing what you're trying to do, getting to work with them every day, and also people who graduate from the programme. It, it's really good having that support, and it makes you feel less insane, which is perfect. And above all, it was, it was absolutely brilliant. Um, it really was good. It was just ace meeting so many people and having all that time to kind of focus on, on the company. Um, and there's people from all sorts of uh, backgrounds. Well, there, there were investors on the programme, so people who had more than enough money but wanted to, to do this bit, explore and validate an idea properly. There were kids out of university, um, it's like me and Dan. Um, like Dan actually had a, his third kid was born while we were in the middle of the programme. <laughs> So we've got five kids between us and, you know, you managed to fit it in. So, you know, it's great. Anyone can do it. Um, so this was everyone who was on our, on our little cohort on the last kind of pitch day. Um, the other thing it makes do is it really helps you grow in confidence, not because you've got people saying, oh, that's a good idea, but because you're constantly challenged and you're constantly made to stand up in front of people and to explain yourself. So you do come out of it feeling a lot more, more confident with the, with the business. Um, yeah, well, it definitely isn't. It's not a route to success. It is very, it's very hard work, and you're also not guaranteed an investment out, out the end of it. Um, so when we joined the programme, we'd, we'd made some mistakes, I felt, with the funding of our last company, which was not raising enough money off the right people. Um, so we were really keen. We spent the three months building out the network and, and getting like three really smart angel investors on board who'd, who'd been through what we, we had before. Um, and yeah, it, it's definitely not easy, but, it, but it's really good fun. 
Um, yeah, we went on Ignite accidentally. We got invited up just for some drinks and, uh, and like a, a chat with, with Paul Smith and Tristan who run the programme. Um, and they rang us up afterwards and said, oh, we'd really like you and Dan to come on. So it was all a bit of an accident. Normally you kind of think about it and apply for it, but it was great. Um, so some programmes you should look at if you are interested in doing one is, is certainly Ignite in Newcastle. They're just going from strength to strength. They've got a team of seven there now running programmes in Manchester, London and Newcastle. Um, and there are options to commute from here. Like I said, Dan and I have got, have got family, so we couldn't just move from, from Sheffield. Um, so we're doing like a couple of days in Newcastle and, and the rest from here. Um, and has anyone come across Dot Forge? Yeah, Emma, has Emma Cheshire ever been in? Yeah, you know Emma Cheshire. Um, I met with her a couple of weeks ago and they're very much focused on kind of any startups that have like social impact or, or anyone working in healthcare. Um, so yeah, definitely have a look at, at those two for kind of more local ones if, if you don't want to, to head down London. Well, there is, there is loads going on in London. Obviously, there's like textiles you've got there and a lot of Google campus accelerators going on. And that's everything really, I guess. Yeah, just, just ask me what you like about accelerators or building software companies, I guess.